Hey everyone, it's Christy, and it's another episode of Evidence That Patriarchy is a Real Thing. This time we're going to be looking at Christian modesty. This video I won't be making, obviously you don't see me, and I'm not going to be talking to you. Instead, and this is a bit unusual for my channel, but I'm going to be featuring a clip from someone else's video because the two people talking do a great job of highlighting all of the crazy things that are is wrong today with the way that Christian patriarchy is being practiced and being taught to other people. To get started, let's ask what is patriarchy, just so that we're all on the same page. I'm going to be quoting here the London Feminist Network, who says that patriarchy is the term used to describe the society in which we live today, characterized by current and historic unequal power relations between women and men, whereby women are systematically disadvantaged and oppressed. This is going to be applying to the concept of modesty that, as you know just from your own experience, disproportionately falls on women and both disadvantages them and oppresses them today in our own societies. Before I show you the video, An Atheist Gets Mad at the Truth About Modesty, I want to give you a frame of reference, some ideas to think about as you're watching the video and the comments. This is sort of a form, um, basically an introduction to um, how people start to do critical discourse analysis. And that's a type of research paradigm that primarily studies the way social power abuse dominance and inequality are enacted, reproduced, and resisted by text and talk in the social and political context. With such dis dissident research, critical discourse analysts take explicit positions and thus want to understand, expose, and ultimately resist social inequality. Here, obviously the position that's being taken up is one of egalitarianism and respect for people instead of the way that modesty sexualizes women and gives men power over women to control their bodies and to expose that and resist it as a, as a social practice. The video, An Atheist Gets Mad, The Truth About Modesty, is on Deadhead Animation's channel. The links for that will be in the description box below and I'll put up a card in the corner as well. The first thing that I want to point out about the video and what you're going to see is that modesty discourse in this video and in Christian modesty teachings generally are framed exclusively through the straight man's perspective. As you'll notice in the video, the man speaking will talk about we and our, but every single example he uses deals with controlling women's bodies and women need to be aware that they should control, cover their bodies. There is a short, short passage where he goes, do men cause lim what lust in women? And, you know, this kind of basically reverses the roles and say, well, of course, but the real thing is that, you know, lust is much more of a man's issue. So there are essentialist claims here that are very degrading to men and women. In this video, you'll see that women's bodies are things that are seen as a source of sin for men. And that means, according to this logic, women are responsible for covering their bodies because they themselves cause sin. Therefore, women bear the burdens of men's sexual thoughts and their sins that they get from having sexual thoughts, and therefore have to cover themselves to protect men from their own thoughts. Men do not have an equal burden. They don't have religious teachings telling them that their bodies are a constant source of sin to the world. Men aren't blamed for the sexual thoughts of women, nor are they taught to cover their sinful bodies to protect women from their sins and to protect women from their own thoughts. Men are assumed to be wanting sex all the time in this perspective, and therefore they need to be protected from women's bodies. As I said, it's a very degrading way of looking at both men and women. The final thing that I want to point out, and both Aaron and Brehan mention this as well, is the idea of thought crimes. Thoughts themselves are now sins, and that's what Jesus in Matthew teaches, rather than teaching men and women how to deal with our inevitable sexual thoughts. This sets up an antagonism between men and women, where women are viewed because of the lens through which the Bible was written as the problem, and their bodies are the things to be controlled, rather than teaching people how to control their own thoughts. And with that framework in mind, enjoy the video, An Atheist Gets Mad, The Truth About Modesty. I love how these clothes resemble a gay pride flag. 
Do you think that that was a Freudian slip? If you've been to the mall recently or turned on the television or looked at billboards as you've driven down the highway, then you know that our country has a serious problem with the way that we clothe ourselves. That's true. Skinny jeans are fucking terrible. Sexually provocative is the way of the day. And it would certainly be an understatement to say that the world is confused with regard to how we should clothe ourselves. I want you to notice this cartoon that a friend of mine drew. Yeah, he drew it, and then he took a picture of it next to the zipper on his pants. You're right. We do have a problem. But I don't think it's about how we dress ourselves. In the cartoon, the doorbell rings, and one girl says, Oh dear, that's the doorbell, and here I am in my underclothes. Here I am in my underclothes. Scandalous. Scandalous. Leave it to a Christian who is certainly not repressed to constantly be thinking about women's undergarments. The other girl, who's actually wearing far less, says, I'm dressed, I'll get it. I like the cartoon because it illustrates very well how confused our society is with regard to the clothing issue. And it's gotten to the point that people are really not even embarrassed about the exposure of their bodies. Because, yeah, your body, that's something you should be totally embarrassed and ashamed about. Oh my god, I'm covered in skin! Quick, cover it up! Yeah, but no, that actually brings up a serious question. Why should you be embarrassed about your body at all? Were you made in the image of God? Yeah, exactly. If we're all made in the image of God, then shouldn't that mean that our bodies should be the last thing that we should be embarrassed about? And isn't that a completely arbitrary thing to be embarrassed about in the first place? The most natural thing in the world, the human body, and you should be embarrassed about it. In fact, it's encouraged. There's a commercial that I've seen. I think it's about dieting, but the whole theme of the commercial is to lose enough weight so that this woman will be able to wear this little bitty bikini and to show off her body at the beach. And she's not embarrassed about it. She should be. Get back to the kitchen. You don't deserve any rights. How dare you wear a swimsuit? I know a man in his 70s, and he told me that when he was young, girls blushed when they were ashamed. He said, but now they're ashamed when they blush. Why should anybody at all care about what your friend thinks? I don't know your friend. I don't care to know your friend. And honestly, he sounds like a bit of a dick. You know, there are some places where men don't want to serve on the Lord's table because of young ladies who are dressed immodestly <laughs> in worship. And they're... Oh my god, I just saw the top of a tit. I just saw the top of a tit. I'm going straight to hell. What am I gonna do? I, I, gotta, I gotta kill myself. I cheated on my wife. I saw the top of a titty at church. I can't go seeing no tops and no titties. Why, that's of the devil. You know, there are some places where men don't want to serve on the Lord's table because of young ladies who are dressed immodestly in worship. And there are wives who don't want their husbands to teach the teenagers because of the way that some of the young girls are dressed, or maybe I should say the way they're not dressed. And you know, this... this You're not going to see a little bit of clavage once in a while and just immediately get all shook up because of it. Or wives who don't want their husbands to teach the teenagers because of the way that some of the young girls are dressed, or maybe I should say... The because as a man, you can't be trusted around teenage girls, obviously. Because if you're around girls, you're going to rape them. Come on! Like, that, that is so fucking stupid. That is, that, fuck. She's wearing short shorts or a short skirt or with her midriff exposed. Talking on the phone? What? Wearing a short sleeve shirt? Oh my god, you live in the south. It's like 35 fucking degrees Canadian temperature, which is like, what, 102 Fahrenheit? Something like that. It's so fucking hot. But no, nope, stay covered. Because you can't be comfortable when you're outside in the place where you live. Sin. We're wearing clothes that are too tight. She's doing something that's sinful. That guy just couldn't get enough of it. See, see, the problem isn't what the woman is wearing. The problem is that we can't trust men around women when they're dressed immodestly. Give men a little bit more fucking credit, you piece of shit! She's taking the sexual impulses that God has instilled in men to, to draw husbands and wives. <laughs> A girl wearing clothes is corrupting other people around her by wearing clothes on her body. And this is literally what Christians think? Fuck you. If anyone came up to me and I was just wearing like a normal t-shirt and it like showed the top part of my arm and was like fitted to my form 
and they called that a modest, I'd be like, no, you're just repressed. This is fine. The problem lies within you. Fuck off. Lives together, and she's corrupting them. She's allowing them to be cheapened. Now, distorting sex is God designed it to be had grudgingly between two people who can barely tolerate each other. God damn it. That's the sex you're supposed to have. Good Christian <laughs> sex where you're both depressed at the end and cry. If I hate you just enough, we could engage in Christian sex. Now, she might not know that she's doing it, but she's distorting sex as God designed it. Now, why is it the case that, that man is sexually impressed by the woman? Yeah, this is a two-way street. Men aren't just sexually impressed by women. Women are sexually impressed by men. And the word sexually impressed sounds really stupid, so don't use it anymore. Yeah, it's called turned on. You know, it's not an accident. It's because God made us that way. Now, why did he do that? Or evolution, maybe? Genesis 2.24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. The reason man is sexually impressed by and attracted to woman is because of God's design. And yet God says that you shouldn't covet. Also, I'm not sure any part of the Bible, and maybe I don't know, so maybe I shouldn't say, I don't recall anywhere in the Bible where it said God made woman to sexually impress men. That's not a thing. It might, by it's definition. Funny how people will argue, they'll say, Oh no, when we say man, we mean all of humankind. No, you mean man. Yeah, man, man, man as in men. Men, yeah. It's so, it's... Because Adam was made yeah, first, and exactly. then Eve was made for him yeah. from a rib. And, and they're like, no, 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 that's not what they mean. They mean men, as in mankind, as in everyone. No, no, no. You mean man, as in guys with dicks. But you know, there's a big difference in the physical attraction of a husband and a wife and that of a man who is physically attracted to a stranger on the beach or at the pool or at the mall. First, let, let's talk about the husband and wife. The Bible says, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. As a loving deer and a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love. Proverbs 5, 18 and 19. Damn, Bible! You getting steamy up in this bitch! Now, that's a husband and wife. Now listen to the difference. Here's a man and a woman to whom he's not married. Matthew 5, 28 says, But I say unto you that whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Okay. Okay, then every time I thought, fuck that fucking guy who cut me off, I'm gonna fucking stab him, murderer. Every time I thought, man, uh, my parents really pissed me off. Sometimes I wish they'd just get in a car accident. I know we've all thought those horrible things. Thoughts are not actions. And also, too, what about those people who can't control their thoughts or have OCD? What you think is not who you are. Part of being human is you have thoughts. And part of being a good human is knowing, A, the difference between thoughts and actions, and B, knowing what thoughts to act upon. And if you're so stupid that you need a god to dictate how you think, you're fucked. You should probably be in jail now because you should not be trusted with having the autonomy to make decisions. Why did God make men sexually attracted to women at all if we're not supposed to be coveting them? If we're not supposed to be looking at them, then why would he make them good to look at? It doesn't make any sense. Now, someone might try to rationalize and say, well, so long as nothing physical happens, there's nothing wrong with it. I heard someone say, it's all right to look so long as you don't touch. But you know, that's not right. Say you're at a restaurant and there's a beautiful, super beautiful waitress. We've all been there looking and, you know, having a lunch, checking someone out. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think sometimes it can be taken to an uh, utmost extreme where it's like... But what you're talking about is social norms, and that's totally understandable. Yeah, yes. But thinking that those things are wrong in the first place, no. it just simply isn't. It's you know just what? human nature. I've had, people, or I've had people give me really nice compliments, or it's not weird. Like, not everything's about sex either. Only when you're that level of repressed is everything about sex. I've looked at attractive people and not been like, Oh, motherfucker, I'm so good. I've just been like, oh, nice. Right? Like, just like when you see a really cool painting or you hear a song you really like, not every single thing boils down to sex. That, that's what goes on in your head when you are so repressed that you film a video series about what to wear. The Bible teaches that God is concerned not only with our actions, but also with our hearts. Matthew 5, 28. Yeah, it's called thought crime and it's fucking messed up. 
And Job 31 and verse 1, Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? You see, Job understood that it would be wrong. Maybe because you looked upon them because you liked what they were wearing or you thought they had a cool shirt or you thought, oh, that's a beautiful dress. I could buy it for my significant other. Or you thought something positive like, are you that disgusting? Are you that seriously fucked up in the head that you can't look at a woman? You can't look, you can't. That's a different level of repression. I wasn't aware that that existed. That's fucking deep seated, man. That's, that's like, I need to go to a psychiatrist level of repression. You can't look at a woman for any other reason but to think that they are sexually attractive. Or or to, to have deviant thoughts about them. You can even look at someone and think they're sexually attractive but not play out a scenario in your mind where you're covering them in whipped cream and they're calling you daddy, right? Like, calm your tits there, buddy. And even if you do, there's nothing wrong with that because it's in your own mind. Mm -hmm. Again, thought crime. You shouldn't be punished for things you didn't do. Even to look on a young lady in a lustful manner. All right. No, it's not. Well, it could be wrong to look at a young lady. Uh, Yeah, it could be wrong to look upon a young lady, like 13... But that's not what you're talking about, and we all know it. This matter of properly clothing ourselves is, is certainly important, and the world's very confused about it. No. No, you're confused about it. Straight up. If you have any understanding of how clothes came to be, you would know that it was protection against the elements. Not a suit that you wear to make sure that your balls don't hang out. Nobody gave a shit about your balls hanging out. They just didn't want to freeze them off. Fashions change. What would have been considered immodest 50 years ago is not what's considered immodest now. And also, um, modesty and thoughts about sex change as we advance as a society and become more accepting of each other. Like, that's not something we want to reverse. We don't want to go in the opposite direction. Like, the next thing, it's weird because this thing about modesty ties into sex, and then somehow I know it's going to tie into gay bashing in some way. Like, let's try to move forward with our thoughts and be more inclusive and more accepting of other people. That doesn't mean accepting deviant lifestyles, or I guess everything's deviant to them, though, because they can't even look upon a woman, so... And so what I want to do is to list some considerations to help guide us in knowing how we ought to dress ourselves. Now, the section of the chapter that we're going to be looking at is dealing with the making of the priest garments under the Mosaic system. Now, beginning in verse 40, the text says, this is from the New King James Version, For Aaron's sons you shall make tunics. And you shall make sashes for them. And you shall make hats for them. Okay. But then why didn't God just tell them to have that in the first place instead of giving them tunics? Wouldn't it make more sense to just tell them that they needed little hats and fucking little gloves and shit like that first instead of giving them tunics and then giving them that later? Yeah, there's big in- inconsistencies there. And then like right here it says you'll, you shall make hats for them for glory and beauty. Okay, so you want us to look good now? Because you, you ch- changed your mind about us being simple? What? What? For glory and beauty. So you shall put them on Aaron and his brother and on his sons with him. You shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them that they may minister to me as priest. Now listen to verse 42. And you shall make for them linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs. From the waist to the thigh? Does it just touch the thigh? Because if so, then it's like, it's like a diaper. Because diapers just touch your thigh. He didn't say covering the thighs. So could we not just wear underwear then? Because waist to thigh. So then wouldn't we be allowed to just run around wearing a bikini? Now notice especially this phrase, they shall reach from the waist to the thighs. One version puts it this way, reaching from the hips to the knees. Well, actually, hips to the knees is not waist to the thighs. Those are two completely different things. They are, they are. That's... Now, what was the purpose of this garment? The text says to cover their nakedness. Thomas Eves, in his tract on modesty, he wrote, In the Old Testament, it was considered nakedness when one had his thighs uncovered. And he cites this verse as proof. It doesn't say that you have to cover your thighs. It says that you have to cover to your thighs. You just had the verses on the screen. We could read them for ourselves. So what do we have so far? In order to be covered adequately, a garment started at the shoulders and it went down to the knees. Now, the third passage I want us to notice is from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. It says this, 
In like manner also, that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with propriety and moderation. In like manner also, that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Did he not just say that the men were to wear fancy shit and hats and jewels? Or is this a different first? Well, even if it is a different, it's yeah, it's it's the one was from Exodus and this one's oh, from okay, Timothy, but yeah. it doesn't matter because it's all from the same Bible. Right, and that's super contradictory because Aaron and his sons were to be dressed in hats for beauty and glory, and then in like manner also women were supposed to wear modest apparel. In like manner also they would be dressing like the men. So yeah, there's a huge contradiction there. That, that nonsense again. Not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works. Now, there are three things I want us to notice in this passage. The first one is modest, the word modest. Now, this word means orderly, well-arranged, or decent. The idea is that she's to adorn herself or beautify herself in a way as to not draw undue attention to herself. Now, in the immediate context, what he's discussing is a woman who's overdoing it. That is, she's overdressing. She's wearing flashy clothes and a lot of makeup and expensive jewelry. So every Christian woman that goes outside of the house wearing makeup is dressing immodestly. Is that what you're saying? You heard them, women. That means no weddings, no going to proms. Every time you had a birthday party, you probably wore makeup. Yeah, that was immodest. You're going to hell. But you know, there's another way in which a woman could draw undue attention to herself and that's by underdoing it. That is by wearing too little, by wearing clothes that are too tight or too low or too short or too thin or, or too revealing. By whose interpretation? Is it yours? Because I'm pretty sure that's your interpretation. And I'm fairly positive that there are a thousand different Christian sects that say that you're completely wrong. So who am I supposed to believe? You or the consensus of everybody else? Now, the second word I want us to notice is propriety. Now, the King James Version... Again, why are all of these words being written on your crotch? ...uses the word shamefacedness. The word propriety is actually closer to our modern-day word modest than the other one. The Greek word for shamefacedness or propriety means a sense of shame, modesty. It's used regarding the demeanor of women in the church. Now, the third phrase comes from verse 10 but which is proper for women professing godliness. Now, let me introduce one more thing, and then we're going to put all of this together. This is from Titus chapter 2. It says that the older women are to teach the younger women to be chaste. Now, that word means pure from carnality, modest, perfect, or innocent. Now, that's the definition of strongs and vines combined. Because, you know what, we don't have enough pressure on us as is. In God's eyes, be perfect. Except he said in the Bible that no one can be perfect except God, but then young women are expected to be chaste. Nice. Thanks. Thanks, Bible. Make, making my life easy. Oh, no, and I really love that double standard, and you'll see it all throughout pretty oh, much... Yeah. You'll see it pretty much through all Abrahamic religions, is that they'll always say that the men are able to go ahead and have sex with as many women as they want, and they're allowed to have many wives, and they're allowed to keep concubines, but if a woman does it at all then they're immediately going to hell. In fact, even in Islam, a woman has to ask permission from their father if they can get married in the first place. And without it, they can't get married. But does a man have to do that? Hell fuck no! He can go ahead and do whatever the fuck he wants. In fact, he can take extra wives. Now, let's put it all together. A godly woman, then, is to dress in such a way so as to not draw undue attention to herself she should have a sense of shame or modesty about her. She should be innocent and pure from carnality. Yes, yeah, all women should just be ashamed of their bodies. Yeah. Shame, shame. 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 It's not like women have been pressured to repress their sexual urges long enough. No, we have to continue this trend on to the 21st fucking century. And she should dress as a woman whose most important thing in life is to be pleasing to God. I want to get down on my knees and start pleasing Jesus. I want to feel his salvation all over my face. I'm sad to say that modern day swimwear doesn't fit that definition. Yeah, and neither does tunics, which is exactly what God gave us in the first place.
Neither does modern day anything. Like, really, that is an ancient text, so modern day anything is not going to be fitting with some old fucking old tiny bullshit. Wah, 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 cry about it. And a person who wants to please the Lord has no business being out in public in modern day swimming attire. Now, that would include both bikinis and one-piece bathing suits. And these well, I knew cut it. off I knew shirts. He was going to bring up the Mormon swimsuit. Like, can, can we not just enjoy our lives and just go to the beach wearing what we like? Like, really? This has to be a thing now? Like, I'm going to have to, if I want to be a good Christian, I'm going to have to get a specially ordered bathing suit. Not available in any store. Like, because that's fair. That seems totally normal. And a guy's still allowed to go to the beach not wearing a shirt? Yeah. Like, is that fair? Like, does that make any sense at all? Because that, that, to me, doesn't make any fucking sense at all. That expose the midriff. They don't fit this description, this biblical definition of modest. Most modern-day cheerleading uniforms don't even remotely come close to fitting this description. How much time do you spend looking at young girls and what they wear? That's a really good question. How much time do you spend on that? A large deal of athletic wear and shorts and form-fitting clothes don't fit this description. Form-fitting clothes doesn't fit that description now. Form-fitting clothes. So you can't wear tight clothes. What the fuck are you talking about? You can't wear tight clothes? No, before you said that you couldn't wear anything that was showing skin. But now you're saying that you can go with your entire body covered, not a speck of skin showing, and that's still a problem with God? Is it a problem with God or is it a problem with you? And a sporting event doesn't change you modest into modest. And a wedding doesn't make you modest into modest. Being near water doesn't make you modest modest. Hot weather doesn't even make you modest modest. That is like the dumbest thing I have heard since the last time I watched one of these videos. No, it might not make immodest modest, but first of all, why should we give a fuck what you think is modest? Because I don't think anybody should care what some random ass guy with a half a mustache thinks about what's modest or immodest. I don't care. Nobody gives a fuck. And if it's hot out and you want to wear a fucking short sleeve shirt, you should be allowed to. And this kind of repression is exactly why you have problems like pedophile priests and the Catholic girl syndrome. On one occasion, a woman had come in to speak with President Woodrow Wilson about some matter. And when the woman left the office, another man in the office said something about her being an intelligent and attractive woman. President Wilson replied, she was a well-dressed woman. The man said, I didn't notice what she was wearing. President Wilson said, that's how I know she was well-dressed. That's the most fucking misogynistic thing I've ever heard. One guy who was being a very nice gentleman was like, oh, she was attractive and smart. And then the other guy was like, and she was covered, which is most important. God forbid she tempts us with sex. Delicious sex. I need sex. And also I can and I can assure you that most men are not like this. This is this paints an extremely unfair picture of them as well. Now you might be thinking, you're talking a lot about the woman. Isn't modesty applicable to the man? And certainly it is. But you know what's interesting? When you read the Bible, Generally, the principles of modesty are applied to women, and passages prohibiting lust are applied to men. Now, is that because women never lust, or because modesty doesn't apply to men? In both cases, the answer is no. It's because of the way we're designed. Lust is generally a bigger problem for the man than the woman. This guy is actually a misandrist. The shit that he's saying is misandry at its finest. Like, men are too weak to control their sexual desires, and women, well, you know, they're just to be looked at. But men, like, we have the issue. Yeah, that, that, that word gets thrown around online a lot with absolutely no meaning. But this is That's literally true. the textbook definition of what that is. Yeah, for sure. That's fucking bullshit. M men can control themselves just fine. Fuck you. Fuck God as well. Thanks a lot. Bye.